five seconds away from our anticipated loss of signal. And we do have loss of signal. Again, this is a 33, 34 minute, four second loss of signal. Orion is now behind the moon, and we are in a period of anticipated loss of signal. This is because the moon is blocking the signal to the deep space network. We are looking ahead to the outbound powered flyby burn, which will take place with the orbital maneuvering system in s less than 17 minutes from now at 6.44 a.m. Central. If you're just joining us, Orion continues to fly behind the moon. We are now 31 minutes away from our anticipated acquisition of signal. And just 15 minutes away from today's outbound powered flyby. So as we continue to make our way behind the moon, we do have that anticipated loss of signal that we've been discussing. But right now, I do have a very special guest joining me. We have NASA Flight Director Zeb Scoville, who is going to chat with us a little bit about this moment, what it means to him, and what we can look forward to upcoming. So Zeb, I can't imagine how special this moment must feel. Tell me a little bit about what this is like. This is uh, one of those days that you've been thinking about and dreaming about for a long, long time. Uh, I remember when I was a kid just dreaming about being an astronaut and going to work at NASA and when I got here we were flying shuttle and we were building a space station and flying it and you know that is an incredible vehicle but on the horizon was always how humanity was going to get back to the moon and, and this morning we just saw the earth set behind the moon as we take the next human rated vehicle around the moon preparing to bring humans back there within a few years this is this is a game changer absolutely and so we are behind the moon as you said right now and this is important because we have a burn upcoming the OPF burn can you talk to us a little bit about what that burn is the purpose of it and why it's important yeah the out 
earthbound powered flyby is the name of the burn, and what this is going to do is it's going to uh, adjust the trajectory of Orion. So as we've been flying towards it from Earth, we're going to loop around behind it, use the gravity to sort of give us a boost, and then this burn will put us into a trajectory that brings us out to what's called a distant retrograde orbit. So this is about a 50,000 mile orbit above the surface of the moon where uh, we can get set up in a stable orbit. We're actually going to spend several days in that orbit uh, before we come back around the, the um, moon once again and do a, another burn on the return end to bring us back towards Earth. Great. Well, we're really looking forward to that burn. It's now just about 12 minutes away. Everything still uh, go for that burn, which is great news. Now, I think the question on everyone's mind is the next time we do this, we're going to have crew on board. So how is that going to be different, or is it going to be different? Yeah, I mean, the crew really puts human in, in the human space flight, right? And that's the whole reason why we're doing this is to get... Uh, get humanity back on the surface of the moon. There's just an incredible amount that we have to learn. This is not like um, uh, Apollo. This is not a repeat of Apollo. What we're going to do and the architectures we're going to be setting up, the locations we're going to go to are going to really unlock uh, a lot of the, the capabilities of the moon, the research on the moon, ability to go explore beyond the moon and, and the solar system onto Mars. There's areas of the South Pole that will uh, have um, volatile resources locked ice from 4.6 billion years ago. Last time I checked, the recipe for ice was hydrogen and oxygen, which, by the way, is also rocket fuel, and you can breathe it and you can drink it, and um, it really uh, enables sort of a long-term architecture on the moon. And so this is the first step. When we come back with crew on, on Artemis II, they're going to be doing a, a real uh, crew test rundown of the vehicle, testing all the life support systems and making sure they function with the human in the loop elements of it. And so that mission will, will bring it and, and do a short flyby of the moon before it comes back, and then Artemis 3 will get us onto the surface. And we are really looking forward to that, but first, today's OPF burn. So I really appreciate you taking some time to chat with me about this. I know you're very busy, so I'll let you get back to your console position, um, but really thank you so much, Seb. We really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. We're now less than 10 minutes away from today's outbound powered flyby burn. As you see in this graphic on your screen that is driven by real-time telemetry, we are about 830 miles away from the moon. Now we do not have signal with Orion right now because the moon is blocking its ability to communicate with the deep space network. However, we do anticipate regaining the communication with Orion in about 25 minutes from now. But before then will be the moment we've all been waiting for, the OPF burn, which is slated to occur at 6.44 a.m. Central, just eight minutes from now.
We're now 23 minutes away from our anticipated acquisition of Signal with Orion. Again, the vehicle continues to fly behind the moon. It is now 764 miles above the lunar surface, but at the time of closest approach will be 81 miles above the surface. Now, we do have the outbound powered flyby burn coming up in about six minutes and 40 seconds from now. But this maneuver was first done during Apollo 8 on Christmas Eve 54 years ago. Apollo 8 was the first crewed spacecraft to leave low Earth orbit and the first human spaceflight to reach the moon. The crew of Frank Borman, James Lovell, and Bill Anders orbited the moon 10 times without landing before splashing down on December 27, 1968. While Apollo 8 completed 10 orbits around the moon, about 60 miles above the surface. Once Orion emerges from the far side of the moon, it will slingshot out to distant retrograde orbit about 30,000 miles away from the Earth. This orbit is critical for key tests and to evaluate how Orion performs in deep space. And this will be the furthest any human-rated spacecraft will have ever traveled away from Earth. But for now, let's take a quick look back on that historic Apollo 8 mission now. Well, Apollo 8 originally was an Earth orbital mission uh, exercising the lunar module. But the lunar module was way behind. The people in uh, NASA came up with the idea of moving Apollo 8 to a lunar orbital mission. Why don't we send the command service module of Apollo 8 to orbit the moon and we can learn a lot about the communication system, the navigation system, how the moon's gravity would affect the uh, orbiting spacecraft, look for suitable landing spots. Well, I got into the big Saturn V. This would be the first time that man had actually launched on a Saturn V. So I thought to myself after this four months of heavy training, I said, you yeah, know, I'm actually gonna go to the moon. We had orbited the Earth, first of all, to check our spacecraft out. Then, when everything was lined and the spacecraft looked fine to go to the moon, we lit the third stage for a second time. Trajectory and guidance are go, over. We can actually coast all the way to the moon. And after a while, you could look back and see the Earth getting smaller and smaller. People on Earth tend to call the, the far side of the moon the dark side, but that's a misnomer. Uh, on our flight, the moon was between the Earth and the sun, the far side was lit by the sun. Uh, we saw the far side. You know, we were like three school kids looking through a candy store window, I guess, just staring at the unnamed craters as they slowly passed us by. Uh, we were busy shooting uh, pictures of lunar surface for lunar landing sites uh, for uh, upcoming uh, lunar landings. And then suddenly I looked out the window and here was this gorgeous orb coming up and I thought holy moly and there over the lunar landscape was the earth the earth was beautiful it was the only thing in the whole universe that had any color I had fought to have a, a long lens and color film I didn't have a light meter just banged off a, a dozen or so pictures changing the f-stop each click I put my thumb up to the window of the spacecraft and I can completely hide the Earth behind my thumb. The Earth is a mere speck in the Milky Way galaxy. And from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, good luck, a Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good Earth. If you're just joining us, Orion is currently behind the moon, and we are in a period of anticipated loss of signal as the moon blocks the signal of the deep space network. We are looking ahead to the outbound powered flyby burn, which will take place with the orbital maneuvering system about two minutes from now at 6.44 a.m. Central. At this time, Orion is about 670 miles above the lunar surface. During its time of closest approach, Orion will be about 81 miles above the surface of the moon.
We're now one minute and 45 seconds away from today's outbound powered flyby burn. This burn will last for two minutes and 30 seconds. This burn will occur with Orion's Orbital Maneuvering System, or OMS engine, which was successfully checked out on Tuesday following the liftoff of Orion aboard the Space Launch System from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The OMS engine performing spectacularly so far. While this is the first flight for the OMS engine as a part of the Artemis program, it actually flew on 19 space shuttle flights, beginning with STS-41G in October 1984 and ending with STS-112 in October 2002. We're now just 40 seconds away from the OMS engine getting to flex its firing capabilities on the backside of the moon. Less than 30 seconds until today's burn. Fifteen seconds until the burn begins. And we anticipate the outbound powered flyby burn to have begun. Again, because we are behind the backside of the moon, we do not have communications with the Orion spacecraft just yet, but we do anticipate acquiring that signal in 15 minutes and 50 seconds from now. At that time, we should be able to evaluate performance of the OPF burn and have some more information about how the burn went. 30 seconds into the burn, two minutes remaining in today's outbound powered flyby burn. One minute into the outbound powered flyby burn. This outbound powered flyby will send Orion close enough to the lunar surface to leverage the moon's gravitational force and swing the spacecraft once around the moon toward entry into that distant retrograde orbit. Orion will remain in the distant retrograde orbit for one long elliptical orbit around the moon, lasting about six days. This orbit is called distant due to the high altitude from the moon. It's about 40,000 miles past the moon in its orbit, which is actually 30,000 miles farther than the previous record set during Apollo 13 and will be the farthest in space any spacecraft built for humans will have ever flown. 30 seconds remaining in today's burn. Now, once in this distant retrograde orbit, the orbit will, is called distant, is called retrograde because Orion will travel around the moon opposite the direction the moon travels around Earth. Distant retrograde orbit provides a highly stable orbit where little fuel is required to stay for an extended trip in deep space in order to put Orion's systems to the test in an environment far from Earth. and the outbound powered flyby burn should be complete. And we are less than 14 minutes away from our anticipated acquisition of our signal with Orion.
The next milestone we'll look ahead towards in our coverage today is when Orion will complete its closest approach to the lunar surface. In 10 minutes from now, Orion will be flying 81 miles above the lunar surface. That closest approach occurring at 6.57 a.m. Central, 7.57 a.m. Eastern. Then just two minutes from the time of closest approach, we do anticipate our acquisition of signal. If you're just joining us, the Orion spacecraft is currently flying behind the moon. We are in a period of loss of signal due to the fact that the moon is blocking Orion's ability to communicate with the deep space network. But we do anticipate gaining signal on the deep space network in 11 minutes and 30 seconds from now. At 6.44 a.m. Central Time, Orion's orbital maneuvering system engine completed a 2 minute and 30 second burn. This burn is called the outbound powered flyby burn. Now again, because we are behind the moon, we will not be able to have data from the Orion spacecraft to evaluate how the burn performance was, but we do expect to learn a little bit more about that once we come back behind the moon. On this graphic you see on your screen, that is, of course, the Orion spacecraft. And the large engine that you see in the middle of the spacecraft there is the orbital maneuvering system. That was the engine that just performed the burn. We anticipate that burn to have lasted 2 minutes and 30 seconds. The OHMS engine, or Orbital Maneuvering System engine, provides 6,000 pounds of thrust and can steer the spacecraft and can be used in some abort cases to safely return Orion to Earth. And in this animation, you're also seeing some of the auxiliary engines on board Orion. These are all also located on the bottom of the service module in four sets of two. Each of these engines provides about 100 pounds of thrust. There are also 24 smaller engines grouped into six pods which provide attitude control for Orion. They can be fired individually as needed to move the spacecraft in different directions and rotate it into different positions. So in total, the service module has 33 engines. But today's burn, again, we anticipate to have been... We anticipate the burn to have occurred with the orbital maneuvering system, or OHMS engine. We are now five minutes away from Orion's closest approach to the lunar surface.
as Orion continues to travel behind the moon, we are still in a period of anticipated loss of signal as the moon blocks the signal to the deep space network. We are anticipating the acquisition of signal in less than seven minutes from now. At 6.44 a.m. Central, just about nine minutes and 30 seconds ago, commands were sent for the outbound powered flyby burn to occur with the orbital maneuvering system engine, or OMS engine, on board Orion, which sends Orion close enough to the lunar surface to leverage the moon's gravitational force and swing the spacecraft once around the moon toward entry into distant retrograde orbit. Following this, Orion will remain in the distant retrograde orbit for one half elliptical orbit around the moon, which will last about six days. The orbit is called distant due to the high altitude from the moon, which is about 40,000 miles past the moon in its orbit. This will be 30,000 miles farther than the previous record set during Apollo 13 and will also be the farthest in space any spacecraft built for humans will have ever flown. The orbit is called retrograde because Orion will travel around the moon opposite the direction the moon travels around Earth. Distant retrograde orbit provides a highly stable orbit where little fuel is required to stay for an extended trip in deep space in order to put Orion's systems to the test in an environment far from Earth. Now this orbit is different than the orbit done during the Apollo program in which the spacecraft and its crew orbited much closer to the lunar surface in a more circular fashion. Distant retrograde orbit is important because it helps us to learn about how a spacecraft functions in a deep space environment. As part of the Artemis program, the Gateway program is building a small human-tended space station which will orbit the moon and provide extensive capabilities to support NASA's Artemis campaign. Gateway's capabilities for supporting sustained exploration and research in deep space include docking ports for a variety of visiting spacecraft, space for crew to live and work, and onboard science investigations to study heliophysics, human health, and life sciences, among other areas. We are expecting the acquisition of signal to occur in four minutes from now. At this time, we do expect Orion to be completing its closest approach to the lunar surface. Orion should be just about 81 miles above the surface of our closest celestial neighbor. At this time of closest approach, Orion flying at a lunar latitude of 6.5 degrees and a lunar longitude of 120 degrees. Orion is 